name of the Father, Son, Spirit. Sang out is old song called Going Home. Just going home. Time we pray, time we decide for to connect ourselves. Essentially, we are going home. Are going to to God. Song continues. It's not far, just close by. Through an open door. It isn't far. It is through a door. The door is Jesus, it is Christ. He is the door. We go through to go home. It's home to the kingdom. Kingdom of God. So let us let us recollect, let us put aside everything and make this decision to go this path. To turn off from everything else. First step we must take to gather ourselves to learn how to collect all of ourselves so that we can make this firm decision right from the beginning. So let's not start to pray without. In free of every distraction. Renounce every, every problem or thought that is coming against us this morning. Let's create a space for the spirit. We can be open to listen. Listen to the voice of truth that is always speaking. We need this silence, we need this space so that we can be recollected and attentive. If we're, if we're not, well then we, will, we won't encounter that spirit. We won't be open to that touch of God, that healing. That light, that illumination. Dear friends, every moment we, we set aside for the Lord
was infinite blessings, benefits for our, our souls, our lives. So it's worth the effort to be courageous in this, to persevere in this. We enter that door of Christ. We, we open up to so many blessings, so much. Because we're we're open now. We're we're not distracted. We're not absorbed in ourselves. can open our, our lives to to encounter the spirit, my spirit with God's spirit. It allows this, the Holy Spirit to, to be active in me and around me in my life. Become aware of his presence and his activity and what he's doing in and through me. All this evolves around my faith, my trust in him. That's the key. It opens the door to, to this spirit. Even if I'm very busy or preoccupied with many things, yet carrying this awareness in me. I have this awareness even in those busy moments of the day. Perhaps I'm not able to pray or focus or fully upon, upon the Lord. It, I'll still be influenced and carried and affected by that grace that has become dominant in me. The Spirit will be guiding me. The Spirit which will cause me to just to keep my focus, those momentary glances in his direction. When your day is busy, but that grace will be sufficient and you'll be holding on to that because you'll be experiencing, you'll, you'll, be, you'll remain in that security. In those moments when you desperately need that affirmation that he is with you. That you have nothing to fear. His word will have taken root deep in your soul, in your spirit. So dear friends, we have to feed our spirits. Feed our spirits with the word, with the truth. So that we can open to the. To this communion with the Holy Spirit. So that we can be. In turn carried through every moment. especially those more, more demanding and difficult periods that we, we experience. In 
know, don't be surprised. Friends, if this morning is difficult or busy or in your head, if you're. If you're just. Find this difficult because. To be recollected and to find it difficult to let go. Other thoughts or distractions in you. Um, or just to be focused. Because. Um, you know, when there's much at stake, evil will. Go to endless lengths to just. Divert you from this path. To freedom and to. Ultimately to the kingdom. It's like. It's like we're stuck in the mud. Of of this world. And there's like. Like the darkness is pulling you. It's all these ties, these spiritual strongholds that are tying you down from getting up out of the mud. Think of that old classical child's book, Gulliver's Travels, is it? Where this big boy Gulliver was, he went to this world where all the people were really miniature, really small, and they thought he was a giant and he was normal. Anyway, they, they got loads of ropes and they tied him down into the ground, remember, on the beach. It's just an image for us just to hold on to that this is what evil does, it tries to tie us down does anything to stop us from getting up. Especially when it knows that there's blessings ahead because the evil Satan, he knows if you can submit to God, like that God will use you so powerfully and become a great threat to the darkness. So we, how we fight it is we just look to Jesus. We look to the light. Just look in that direction. Especially when we're making this decision. This most important decision. I am turning to Jesus, I'm turning to the one who who gives me that true, who is the way. Who is my true security? Who is my, my life? We're trying to go home, but we don't know, you know, Thomas says, Lord. Or, or Jesus said, you know, the way the the way to the place where I'm going. And poor Thomas said, Lord, we do not know the way. Or we do not know where you're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus replies, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father. No one can come home to the kingdom except through me. So we have to follow Jesus. If he is the one that leads us out of the darkness. Jesus said, if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness. To follow Jesus is, is ultimately to believe in him. The 
disciples asked Jesus one day, how can we do the works of the Father? What is it to do God's work? And Jesus said, to believe in me is to do the work of, of the Father. To believe in Jesus, to accept his promises, his word, who he is, what he's done, to open and absorb this truth of God. You know, evil knows what can happen, what can flow from these turning points in our lives when we this decision is possible. If I do decide, if I if I make this conscience decision, you know the victory is there immediately. The evil one loses its power. Like it's like. God holds evil in check. Just the victory is, it's the surprise of faith. It's, it's not me fighting the darkness. It's, it's God as I decide for God. That's the work. I don't have to, I don't have to fight evil. I don't have to take darkness on. No, oh, I have to to wait upon the Lord. I have to listen to him. And then my soul will will live. Then I'll rise up and transcend and, and I will walk into life, into, into the arms of my my father. My rest, my rest, ultimately. This is what prayer is, friends. It, it is coming to that place of rest, coming closer to him. And I can do it immediately. And I recollect myself. All of a sudden, I'm open to hear him. So we're not saying a lot of prayers this morning. We're not babbling, we're not using our mouths, not using many words. Jesus said, when you pray, do not babble like the pagans. They think that by saying many words that they will receive no. they'll be heard. It's the one who prays with a lot of words, they won't be heard. You know how Jesus taught his disciples how to pray properly. This is how Jesus prays. This is how Jesus lives this relationship with his father. This is where Jesus' security comes from. So we have to hear how, we have to listen to how Jesus prays when he says, Our Father, my Father. We have to listen to does he say to his father? Oh, that today you would listen to my voice. Let's listen this morning to Jesus praying. As they asked him, how do you pray? Teach us to pray. This is what you do. 
When you pray, say this. Well, this is how Jesus prayed. Just listen, and that prayer will change us then. When I listen to the truth. The essence of prayer is listening, hearing the voice of God. And we can hear it when we, when that our Father is spoken. When we become aware of that truth, it changes me. It's not, it's not what I say to God that changes me. It's not my babbling. It's not my prayers. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. No, s s slow down. It's not what I say to the Father. It's what God says to me. What I hear, what I absorb. It becomes clear to me when there's a new experience in me, an experience of change in me. The word becomes flesh in me. I absorb this prayer. Our Father. I don't have to say another word. Our Father, my Father. I become aware of this, this word of truth. Can we jump into the arms of the Father? Father of tenderness, of compassion, Father who loves and cares for his child that I am. I'm so important to him. Our Father in heaven, our Father, may your name be holy. Your name be praised, Father. Let us enter into this relationship with the Father, the relationship that Jesus entered into. Let us jump into this, this truth. It's like an immersion into God. Just go to the Father. It's like throwing yourself into an ocean. Don't be afraid. It's a, we are thinking of that lovely image Carol left us the other day when she. That, it, that image of the river. River flowing down to the sea. And um, how, how afraid that river was, you know, to, 
just was on its path, you know, going through the mountains and the, the hills and the valleys and then windings and going through the land and then it just comes to that place of entering into the sea. It was just the wide unknown, just not knowing what was next. Would would he disappear? Would she disappear forever? And um, couldn't go back, you know. The river doesn't go backwards. It just has to keep going. So it's having the courage just to to trust in the in that to have take this leap of 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 faith. This is the key, friends, not to stop and in fear. We think we're in our own strengths. It's to just to let go to that and enter into the ocean. And this miracle as we just submit ourselves to God. As we hand over our lives to his providence and care. That's throwing yourself into his arms. This is wonderful. We don't lose ourselves. But we find ourselves. We find who we are in God. We we become the ocean, as the story says. We don't disappear into something. No, we become like God's. We, we become strong and divinized, configured. When we follow Jesus, when we believe and trust in him, we we follow this way of it's the way of 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 peace and love and we follow his way of trusting, this total submission in it's just entering into this relationship of of can praise him. You just, Lord, I am home. I'm with you. I depend upon you for everything. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, the kingdom of love and light and peace, your will, your will be done, Father. I am here to do your will. I'm here to depend on you alone, to submit myself, to surrender. Then I am safe. Stop now before this experience so that we can truly accept and say, not my will, not my control, I'm not, I am accepting your will. Everything that comes into my life is coming from your hands. Accept everything. Nothing will separate me from your love, from your protection, from your providence. You are holding me. You are my father. I have to be that little child. 
Jesus said it, you can't come to the kingdom of God unless you become like a little child. This is ultimately our attitude. It was the attitude of Jesus, the be attitude. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the poor the poor are those who are have nothing, who are not wealthy, who Have this interior poverty. Maybe another word is meekness. Don't trust in themselves, you know, give in to the pride and the vanity, you know, as if we have the right to dominate people and life. You know, I, I struggled so much yesterday with this. I, there was a big event on in the hall. There was too many people at it, of course. It was, I was worried about the numbers and I, I kind of tried to dominate people and stop it. And I put up my hands and I rebelled against them all. It was a big kind of melee and argument. People were angry with me. I fought against them, thinking myself justified. But that's not. The beatitude. It's not the way to the kingdom. That's not the way of trusting like a child. Depending on God, that's not the way of meekness. Learn from me, for my, um, I am meek and humble of heart, says the Lord. Learn from me. I have to die to this need to dominate people and to control people and abuse my authority. I have to be, come like a child. To let go of all that was the hardest thing yesterday. It was a real test of faith for me. I can't be, I won't have rest if I am dominating. Jesus said, learn from me for I am gentle and humble of heart. And then you will find rest. For your soul and um, I was sitting here you know in prayer and just trying to give in and just to hand it over to enter this submission of will and just depend upon the Lord his faithfulness enter this truth of my existence I, I saw the, the other side of it. I saw how upset and impatient, if, if, if we're constantly impatient with other people and upset with them and angry and fighting in myself, like I just, just wears you out, just so drained by the whole experience and weary and lost. I, I, I was trying to, you know, turn to the good and just to see, oh, these are, you know, I was saying to me, these are good people. And, you know, when I started to see the good in them, I could see them trying to organize the traffic and move people out and do their best. I could see the, the mother running around trying to do her best. So we have to look with new eyes and 
helps to see their limit the limitations of people and to look at their faults or limitations just to look with that compassion and tenderness and meekness not trying to be in charge and to be full of myself then things can happen rather than wasting my energy on just complaining all the time. So it's a real school. Just learning how to see with new eyes. Meekness, friends, is it's another expression of this poverty, this interior poverty. Blessed are the meek, blessed are the poor. It's, it's those ultimately who put their trust in God alone. Find our true security. Blessed are the poor. Theirs is the kingdom. See, there you are. Where we find our security. Security in God. Nothing ourselves or in the world. We're not gods. We're not in charge of anything. Let us hope in the Lord. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, also depend completely on him. Friends, have you thrown yourself into the arms of your father this morning? Have you jumped into Jesus' arms? Because without this trust in Jesus, is the door to the kingdom. When I trust him like a little child, the trust of a child, we have to maybe absorb that today again. Let this be our homework for today. I spent the whole of yesterday working on this one word of the gospel, trying to live this beatitude of dependence. So if we have some fears, friends, or anxiety, hardness, because you will get your trials and just as I did, you will get, there will be difficulties and problems will, will surface, storms will blaze around you. could just surrender myself as a child to its mother. Child needs nothing and it knows its mother is looking after him. It can be that safe today and every moment. I can jump into Jesus's arms can depend upon him. I can enter this narrow door. And I won't pretend it's easy. It's the narrow door is 
is difficult. It's the hard way and very few go there. The narrow door is the door of faith. is the way of our little Saint Therese walked of childlike trust and self surrender the poverty of spirit Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. <laughs>